Good morning. I'm Valley Anderson. Today is Wednesday, September 1st. Welcome to Sunrise with Dr. Serge Akana. Dr. Khanna is a servant of the underserved and an advocate of his recently launched post-incarceration juvenile justice reformation act initiative, which is also known as the returning youth initiative. This initiative assures youth that a release from incarceration have the ability to create a self-sustaining pro productive life for themselves. How are you doing this morning, Dr. Khanna? Good morning, Valley. I am fabulous today because today is the first day of the month, September. It is September 1st, 2021. Well, a lot of things happened during this month of September. And in this news bite of sunrise, we will be highlighting a few things on the, throughout the month of September. It's also a month where a major sad event happened in the world. We, do, we all are quite familiar with the term called 9-11. That is upcoming. It will be a mark of 20 years when this Twin Tower was crashed and we lost a lot of people. So September is a month of remembrance for all the people, those who lost their life and all the brave people who tried to save them. So let's start September 1st with this braveness, starting from a young boy from Wyoming. Well, actually it's not a state Wyoming, it is a city called Wyoming, Michigan. I never heard of that state, that city, but you know, it's a city in Michigan called Wyoming. And his name is, if I pronounce it correctly, Day Avian, spelled D E capital A V I O N. So please forgive me if I'm pronouncing it wrong. It's called Davian Miller. He's a 13 year old boy. But why are we highlighting a 13 year old boy? Because he has a spirit to give something to the community. A 13 year old boy wants to give something back to the community. And how is he doing that? Valley, could you highlight that? How did he do to give back to the community? Yeah, so Rodney Smith Jr. actually launched a 50 yard challenge to teach kids the importance of work ethic and challenging their energy to make positive things happen in their community. And Miss the Avion, he was one of the members who participated in the 50 yard challenge and he was successful. He, he, he got it all done. So good wow. for him. So he mowed 50 yard grass yep. for the community and free of charge. Correct. Okay, with the heat. So he said that the challenge was only the toughest challenge for a 13 year old boy was the heat. I can imagine that, okay? Because this year in, in the Midwest and even in East Coast, the heat was above 100. So during that time, this young boy, so what does this say? What does message goes to the young people? That hi, young adults, please, Engage yourself in doing something positive for the community. Bring your talents out. Show the community that you can do it. Instead of doing things that will hurt the community and that will help, that will not help you to be a good citizen. I think it also shows that um, these young kids actually want to help their community too. So with a right leader like Rodney Smith Jr., he made it possible for the kids to actually achieve something and better their community. Exactly, Valley. That's the point. You just hit the nail on that particular point that, yes, it is also the responsibility of the community members to engage these young adults for something positive because everybody has talents that needs to be engaged. So let's not just 
say that, oh, you need to, don't do this, don't do this, don't do this. Show them what should they do so that they can, this is exactly what, you know, Mr. Smith Jr. did for his community. And I salute him that he could bring all these things together. I think a couple of weeks ago, we, we remember we spoke about some leader put 70 kids together to do something. That's a huge challenge to put all the 70 young adults together to do something positive. So definitely if we do something like that, that will definitely give a change. So all we need to have a mind change, the shifting the paradigm is very important. And thank you very much Valley for highlighting that you know, we need to engage these young adults with positive thoughts so that they can remain in a positive spirit always. So, you know, I, I, I like the way, um, you know, Mr. Smith did this. Anything else that goes on on this September 1st? I would like to highlight a couple of things, you know, on this September 1st, some, some uh, because as I said, September 1st is a very important uh, month for a lot, of, a lot of things, especially for US for this 9-11. And also some famous people were born on the September 1st. You know, I, I cannot list everybody, but there were uh, a Chinese gentleman called Ro Mu Hung, who was born on September 1st, 1946. And I heard his name called William Stanley Jevons. You know, he was born just a couple of years before I was born, that was in 1835. So September 1st, 1835, this gentleman was born and also one of an important uh, person, which uh, you know some people might know, those who are listening uh, or might not even know that uh, there is an, a spiritual organization which was formed in 1965 in the United States. The founder of that spiritual organization called ISKCON, I-S-K-C-O-N, International Society for Krishna Consciousness, his founder, A.C. Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada was born on September 1st, 1896. I heard, I just came to know that I heard that the whole world is celebrating his 125th birthday on September 1st. So like that, we have many, John Redmond, who was born in September 1st, 1856. We have Roger Kessment, one 1864. Oh, wow. The most amazing one, which everybody might have known, those who are famous in those who like history. William Ford, Prince of Orange, was born maybe a little bit, uh, you know, a couple of years before Valley, you were born. He was born on September 1st, 1711. So, you know, does, does that ring your bell? You were born during that time? No, not quite. <laughs> <laughs> not quite. 1711, you know, none of us were born that, that during the time. So, well, that's that's all I have from the news bite. I'm sure you, you Valley, you have something wonderful to share. Yeah, today. today is National American Chess Day that was first referenced in the year 600. So a wow. little bit about it. Um, one of the longest chess games happened in 1989, and that lasted 20 hours and 15 minutes. Wow. 20 <laughs> hours and 15 minutes. That's wow. It's a long time to play a board game. <laughs> I know. I know. I know. But, you know, I, I heard that chase is something that brings your focus on the metro. So, yeah, that is, that is a long hour. Do you know who played it during that time or no? No, I don't, unfortunately. Oh, okay. And also the second book ever printed in English was about chess. On this particular day? Um, no, it just says like just any, like the second book ever published in and printed in English language was about and focused on chess, the game. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's nice. That's nice. Thank you for sharing that uh, wonderful national... American Chess Day, so that means 
today is September 1st. Everybody should try to play chess. And again, that game is something that you need to have a lot of patience and you need to have a lot of focus. So that is actually a good game for, especially for the young adults, those who want to concentrate on something that will give you dedication and focus. And thank you very much, Valley, for hosting this wonderful sunrise every week. Thank you again. Thank you, Dr. Khanna, for joining me today. For those who wish to know more about this initiative, please visit the website returningyouth.com. As you all know, we bring Sunrise to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, shortly after 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can watch us on Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube at Returning Youth or Khanna for Youth. Thank you for tuning in. We will see you again on Friday. God bless.